Hello, in this presentation, we will be recording the purchase of furniture and an investment within QuickBooks Pro 2018. If you have been working along with us, that is great. We will be continuing with the problem. If you have not been working along with us, that's okay. We're going to be entering two transactions, one to record the investment from the business into an investment, how to record that in terms of QuickBooks, what does the transaction look like and what are some ways to record that transaction then we will record the purchase of furniture and again same questions how are we going to record that transaction within uh, the quickbooks program we are working in the get great guitars problem here so if you have been following along you'll have this set up if not that is okay we can just see how to record transactions such as these uh, if you have the backup file and want to start exactly where we are at at this time, just so we're in the exact same location, then you can take that backup file and go to File and uh, Open and Restore Company, and you want to restore the backup, and that'll put us in the same point. So also, next point we're going to have is to have the open windows open. Typically, I like to have that. When you open the program, the default typically is to have these shortcuts open. I would rather see the open windows and in order to do that you go to view and open windows and that'll show us what we have open at this time that being in this case the home tab and the balance sheet this is something I wasn't didn't know I had open and I'm going to close it so I'm going to go there it's that one and I'm going to close that out and that's one of the benefits of having the open windows open you can see uh, what you are working with and toggle back and forth within them. First transaction we're going to record is going to be an investment in stock for $12,000. So we're going to have a generic type of investment. We're going to be investing in Vanguard stock. We're assuming this is a mutual fund. We're going to put money from our checking account into the stock. Now, when we purchase the stock, uh, we may be writing a check or we may do an, an electronic transfer, most likely an electronic transfer. What we want to do then here is to record that electronic transfer, which we would then see either at the point of the transfer or on our bank statements once we're trying to reconcile and record the activity. And therefore, we could record it in terms of, of a, a check and write a check here, but it may be easier, and it often is in a transaction such as this if we're not actually printing the check, to record this directly into the register. So that's what we're going to practice now, and if you're recording a lot of data, within uh, the register that you need to record that's already you already wrote the check or you already have the electronic transfer and you need to put the data into QuickBooks often easier to use the register than the form it'll look a lot like a check register and that'll be uh, something that could be useful to understand to use so in order to do that we're going to go to the banking at the top we're going to go down to use register and whatever your bank account is, that's the one we want. We call ours the generic name of the checking account. If you select the drop-down, note you can use a register for any account. So it's not like something that's restricted solely to cash accounts. QuickBooks tries to use the register for everything. And in so doing, is attempting to eliminate or at least reduce greatly the need for debits and credits and journal entries. Now the checking account, if you're dealing with cash, either paying cash or receiving cash, you'd rather go to the checking account than the other register, typically in my opinion. For example, if we had an account already set up in this case for an investment, then we could go to the investment asset register account and record that side of the transactions and the other side would be to the checking account. So if we're not dealing with, a, with cash at all within the transaction, the point is we could still use registers instead of journal entries, but it gets more confusing if cash is not one of the two things involved within the transaction. So we're going to keep it on the checking account in any case. We're going to say OK. Here is our register. We don't have a lot going on at this point in time, but we can see that the balance is 140 at this point. We are then going to record uh, this transaction for the Vanguard uh, stock meaning we're basically putting money into Vanguard for a mutual fund. We're going to make this a generic type of investment. We're going to put it in there as of 010421. Note that we are going to have some transactions that are going to be a bit out of order in this comprehensive problem. So we are working in the future, working in 2021, that being the current year we are working in. Now, if this was a electronic transfer, then we might put something in here. I usually put like other or transfer or something like that. 
if it's a check number, and we're going to assume it is a check number here, we will start with the check numbers, 1001. Now again, this might, and typically if we were putting stuff into Vanguard, it might be an electronic transfer, in, the, in which case we could still use this register. It's just that we wouldn't want to reference a check number here. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna assume we, we wrote a check for it and so we can see what the check numbers will do and see that they will be automatically generated this is the first check that we have written and therefore we're gonna assume our checkbook begins on 1001 that being the reason and we have to type that in there after that point in time the checks should be automatically numbered the checks even if you buy checks uh, will be something that will be printed outside of QuickBooks and so even if you're printing checks through QuickBooks you're gonna to have to get the checks that are already pre-numbered and that's gonna be one of the internal controls one of the checks and balances to make sure that errors aren't happening meaning if the check numbers are sequential and they line up to the sequence that is showing up within QuickBooks then we're more confident that checks have not been stolen and that is a good thing so that's the pre-numbered sequence it should uh, just automatically generate the check number after this point we're going to say the uh, person is going to be vanguard the company and say tab we haven't set this up yet we're going to set this up now we're not going to do the full setup we're just going to do a quick setup here so i'm going to say quick setup and this is not going to be a vendor it's not going to be a customer it's actually going to be other so we're going to take other uh, it's, it's not a normal customer or vendor, so we'll say it's going to other. It's going to be an investment, and we'll say OK. And we will have a payment, so it will be a payment, and the amount is going to be 12000 which we are investing. Now, we're going to invest that. I'm, notice I'm tabbing through this also, and it didn't go to the, to the deposit side because if there's a payment, there will not be a deposit. And note, this is a bit different than the checkbook, again, is that we have to have an account. It's not enough to say it's Vanguard, even though we know who Vanguard is if we're working with our own books. But we need to have an account as well as uh, the name. And the account, we're going to say this is just in short-term investments. We're going to put all the investments into short-term investments. And note, we don't have that account yet. So when I select tab, it's going to say, hey, you don't have that account yet. Do you want to set it up? We're going to say yes. So I'm going to say tab. It's going to say set up that account. We're going to say yes, please set up the account. And uh, we have it guessing in this dropdown that the, the setup should be to an expense. That is not correct in this case. Uh, typically, oftentimes it is correct. Most of the time when we're writing a check or recording a check within the check register, it is for an expense. But... It may be for something else. It may be for an asset such as a purchase of equipment or it may be for an asset such as the investment in this case. So what we want to put it into is not going to be an expense, but we're going to put it into other current assets. So we'll put it into other current assets here and we're going to keep the name. I'm not going to put it in any subcategory. However, note that if you want to track your investments a little bit in more detail within QuickBooks and you have a lot of different types of investments and you're just basically going to update them uh, each time you have the statement, then you could have just short-term investments and then a subcategory for each individual investment and then go in there and track the gains and losses for each individual investment. We're going to group all our investments in this case into one, uh, one investment line item that investment being the short-term investments here so i'm not going to have a subcategory we're going to keep the description we're not going to deal with the tax line at this time uh in in these example problems again the tax line would be nice if you are using quickbooks especially with some of intuit's tax software that would kind of integrate uh, the tax preparation process so we're going to go ahead and say save and close and there we have that. Remember, it's not going to actually remember that it's not going to actually record this until we hit enter or tab again until it gets to the next line in essence. So if you leave, if you look somewhere else at this point, it's not going to have done anything until we say enter or tab. And there we have it. So there's the 65 reducing our balance here. The other side uh, going to the investment account where it's up here. But it, it notice it adjusted it by date. So it bounced it up here 
to be in order by date, but here's the 1001 Vanguard 12 and uh, the investment. Now, if we want to see that on the reports, which we typically do, you want to kind of get an idea of where these things are going. What does it do to the end product? What does it do to the financial statements? How is it making us look as a company? Then we're going to go, this is only going to be affecting the balance sheet. So I'm going to go ahead and check out the reports. We're going to go to company and financial. Scroll down to the balance, balance sheet standard. We're going to change the date to uh, 1231 uh, 21. That's the, that's the dates that we are working in for this example problem. And we know that cash went down. So if I want to see what happened within cash, we can double check on cash. And I need to change the range. I need the beginning date to be 010121. And that'll give us the whole year's worth of data if we tab through. And there we have it. It's decreasing the original balance minus the 12. And that's what's impacted there. I'm going to close that out. We probably knew that. The other side is the, is the new thing. This is where we placed it into other current assets in the assets section. It's not on the income statement. It's not affecting net income. It's just one asset going down, another asset going up. This is the key component that we want to make sure that we do when we record a new account like this. If we put this in the expense section, we kind of mess things up and we'd have to adjust that at some point. So here's the 12 there. Obviously, if we double click on that, that is all we would see at that time. I'm going to go back to the checking account and we're going to record the next transaction that we were going to work with, that being the purchase of office uh, furniture so we're going to go back to checking and again we're going to do it the same way note that if you were to write a check directly for office furniture then you could go to the home tab and you could uh, write a check and that would then write the check and it would basically do the same thing that we are doing here you can also go to banking and go to write checks at the top to write a check However, if you're in a situation where the, where the check was, has already been written or you're doing some other type of payment that you need to later put in to QuickBooks, it's oftentimes good and useful and faster to use the check register. So that's what we're practicing here. We're going to go back to the checking account. We will be writing checks later and it'll be, it'll be great. But uh, we're going to go back to the checking account here and uh, enter the next transaction. We're going to say that we purchased office furniture on uh, one nine. Now I'm going to make the date go up, not by retyping the whole thing, but just hitting the plus button and note that feature can be useful. If we, if we hit the plus button a few times, go up to one oh nine. Anytime you can use a keystroke rather than uh, typing in the information, you're going to be working a bit faster and that's always going to save a little bit of time, which is always nice. And note when we tab over, it's going to have the check number. So we're, hopefully that's the correct check number. If it was not a check, if it was an electronic transfer, then we would delete it. We would put transfer, electronic payment, some type of abbreviation other than a check number. And then we're going to scroll over. I'm going to say we bought it from Office Depot. So I'm going to say Office Depot. We don't have this set up yet. So when we say tab, it's going to say you don't have this set up yet. And again, I'm going to do a quick setup. We're just going to set it up quickly uh, rather than go to the full setup. So we're going to go to setup, vendor, customer, employee, other. In essence, this is a vendor. So it's guessing correctly here. It will typically guess as a vendor because typically when we're using the uh, register, we're making a payment. Usually payments go to vendors, people we purchase from. So we're going to say that is okay. We'll keep that. And then we're going to say the amount that we purchased was 16 thousand we're using nice round numbers here and note that it's not going to go to the deposit side we need to make sure that we're either going to the payment side or the deposit whichever is applicable and then uh, QuickBooks will not have us go to the other one because you can only have one at any given transaction then the other side of the account is going to go to furniture and equipment we had already set that up we hadn't set it up but by picking the chart of accounts by picking the type of company QuickBooks had given us a preliminary list of accounts one of them being if we start typing in furniture and equipment note that it's a fixed asset so that's the key point if you do not have a furniture and fixture account and you're recording it you don't want to put it in there as an expense which will often be the default if you're creating a new account 
You want to make sure you're putting it in there as an asset, not just an asset, but a fixed asset, assets that depreciate. That will get it in the correct ordering. It will then not put it on the income statement, but on the balance sheet as it should be and put it under the subcategory of fixed assets. Set tab, and then we're going to say, uh, note that it's not going to record it until we say enter. So I'm going to go enter, and then it records it there. Again, it's going to record it by date. Note that because we put this on 10-9 right before this transaction, that we did have uh, an overdrawn until the loan happened here on the next day. So just uh, something to note, just the dates that uh, we put the problems in there. It did rearrange the date up to here. Then if we want to see what is going on, once again, we can go back to the balance sheet. And notice it's going to say refresh needed. So I'm going to go back there and it automatically then refreshed. So how can we check that? We can see if this transaction has happened. We're going to go into the checking account, double click on the checking account using the auto zoom feature. It's going to change the dates to 010121. And there we have this transaction of the 16 right there. If we want to see that transaction, if we actually want to see the form or the driving document that QuickBooks has created, we can zoom in on that and we see that it is a check. Note that we put it in the check register and QuickBooks deals a check with that when we put it in the check register. Here is the check and the check itself means that we're decreasing cash. The other side of the count then is the furniture and fixture. So let's look at that other side. Going to close this out. Going to close this out. Back to the balance sheet. Looking for furniture and fixture. Note the categories of the assets in the balance sheet. It's going to be assets. In the first uh, check is the checking account, the cash. Then accounts receivable. Then other current assets. Then the fixed assets. That's critical. That's important to have within your financials. That's why it's important to make sure you put the furniture and fixture into the category of the fixed assets that will then be depreciated and we see the 91 there let's see what that consists of by double clicking on it and we will change the date to 010121 and there we have it there's the 16 right there after our beginning balance if we double click on that then we're going to see that same check there's that same check from the other side of the transaction so I'm going to close this back out. I'm going to close this back out. I'm going to go back to the check register and note that is how we're going to we're going to put this information into the check register. We're going to do one more here and that's going to be for furniture and fixture, another transaction purchasing the furniture and fixture and that will complete this process. We're going to say that this transaction happened on 111. Note that I'm just having the plus two times, saying plus plus brings the date up and it's going to give us that check number which we're going to say is right we're going to say we wrote it with a check and now we are recording it within QuickBooks practicing the recording within a check register and this one we're going to say we bought from Amazon and I'm just going to put Amazon and I'm going to say tab once again we have not set that up if we want to put the address and a lot more information we do the setup that'll give us more detail but typically when we're paying the bills, the name is often what we need. That's what we would need on the check. That's what we would need on the reference. So we are often good with the quick setup, which will just give us that. This then also a vendor, the default is correct in this case. We're going to say OK. Then we're going to put the amount, 7000 in this case is how much we are paying for the furniture at this transaction. It's going to then go down to the account that we need. We're going to have, once again, that same account, furniture and equipment. And it's going to pick that account. Notice I'm just typing in there. It then autofills. It tries to find that. If we have no idea where it would go, we first would want to hit the drop down and scroll through. Note that it's in order. Assets, liabilities, equity, income, and expense. And more specifically, the asset of cash, then the asset of receivable, then the current assets, then the fixed assets, then the other assets. Then the liabilities, including the payable, followed by the credit card, followed by the other current liabilities, followed by the long-term liabilities, and then the equity, and then the income, and then the expenses, first the cost of goods sold expense, and then all other expenses. If we just type, if we know what we're doing though, then we're going to type it in there, and if we know which account we are working with, we'll type it in there. 
and then tab once we see it that's going to be the quickest way to select and then we just want to say enter once we have selected to make sure that it then records that's going to be the last transaction we have let's just check it out one more time we know what's going to happen on the balance sheet it's going to decrease the cash the ending cash balance and now should be 105,000, and it's going to put an increase into the furniture and fixture and amounts we can't see here on the check register this register representing the cash balance not representing the furniture and fixture balance if we go back to the balance sheet cash is at 105 furniture and fixture is now at 98 if we zoom in on that there it is if we then uh, go to the date range of 010121 we can see that second transaction there one more thing just want to point out just want to note as we see this we could enter this as we said a few different ways we could have written written a check if we were actually processing the checks that is what uh, we would do and we could also record this not in the cash register but in the furniture and fixture register and just to show you how quickbooks does that let's take a look at that we're going to go to uh, banking at the top use register just like we did when we went into this check register this time however we're looking for the furniture and fixture ledger just to see what that would look at look like we're going to go down to furniture and fixture and open that ledger here we have it it looks it looks a bit different but it's going to be the same type of concept same type of idea if you open up this splits column it'll show you a, a more accounts if there's basically more than two accounts within a transaction but this is what happened we had the beginning balance we haven't we didn't do that here but then we had our transaction here if we were to enter the same transaction from the other register we would say this register meaning the asset of the office equipment would have gone up by that transaction with the 16 an increase rather than an increase in rather than a decrease in cash we're talking about the register of equipment having an increase in the office equipment and the other side then would be the checking account so here's the checking account so it's the mirror image if we go to the checking account of this transaction here so note that it, it is possible and i would not recommend ever putting it into the register checking account for equipment like this however this is useful to know especially when you see a transaction that does not involve cash if there's if for example we bought equipment on account uh, then or bought equipment for a loan we might want to go into the equipment account and say there's an increase in equipment and then go okay what's the other account that we're going to put that into and we would then put it into some type of loan account that may be an easier way to think through it even though cash is not affected and avoid having then to use journal entries using debits and credits if we don't really understand debits and credits so just want to point that out and that's going to be those two uh, transactions or three transactions.